So one of the problems I run into a lot shooting in Seattle where the skies are quite often gray is that when I expose for my subject, the sky is blown out. Um, this is a great example. Um, I'm going to show you a technique that I like to use, and I believe our clients deserve this technique because they should see the same sky that they saw that day. Um, it is a technique I've used for years in my commercial work. Um, I would have a tripod when I would photograph a, a architectural shot, and I would expose one shot for the sky, one for the shadows, and it'd be an HDR, so um, a high definition type of image, or I would just mask the sky back in. And that's the case, that's what I'm showing you here. It said if I didn't have a tripod, I'm actually gonna grab a sky that I e either shot that afternoon that for that wedding day, or I'll bring in a, a sky that has a similar character to give um, back the density that, that we used to get during the film era. So why don't we get started? This image is you know, pretty pretty average out of the box. This this sky just takes away all you know, it just grabs my eye. My eye immediately goes to the sky and it loses its emotion. We want this image to have a lot of impact because this is going in the album. It is a transition image um, into what will soon uh, be in the album, the the ceremony part of the day. So let's get started. Let's first what I'm gonna do is open my action set. This is a Jay Garner action. Um <clears throat> I'm going to choose, in this case, the sky underlay. This means I'm going to put the sky under the existing image. So let's go ahead and push play. And it's going to go through a, a dialog box that basically says, pick your sky. And let's see, the ominous skies. Let's try this. Number 51, maybe 52. Perfect. Number 49 in this case. So I'm going to open that. And basically it's saying transform it into place. Um, you, you have the flexibility of really skewing a, uh, most guys. So I'm just going to pop it into place. You don't have to get too crazy. Um, as long as it's covering the entire area it's supposed to, we're good to go. This talks about my different blending techniques. Now, if you watch the rest of my tutorials, I hope you started with my different um, blending modes. There's either, there's either the soft blending mode or hard blending mode which is uh, c cutting. And so we're gonna do a little both in this case. So why don't we get started on that? Um, I'm gonna hard cut first. Now I'm gonna put my hardness over here at about 70 to 80. I'm gonna go to 77 and, and my um, brush, you can see here, paints away a nice edge. The opacity needs to be at 100%. So I'm just gonna zoom in on the work here. And all you do is you hold shift and it pops from one area to the next. Do you see that? Oops, I missed a little bit. <clears throat> Make it a little bit smarter, smaller and the edge will get harder. So I'm holding shift and boom. Hold shift, boom. Missed a little, go back. Now that looks like a real edge because it's 80% brush. Very, very good. The best part is that um, you hold shift and it jumps. So what I'm gonna do is finish masking this part out, but I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave this area over here, show you, and that'll be an area where I will do soft blending. So bear with me, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm finished masking out my building, except for this area right over here. It is an area where I'll have to blend. There's trees here. Now this is the case, we see this all the time, where we have to do a little soft edge, a little hard edge. Blending. The building looks perfect because I had an 80% brush. The cut is good. Sometimes you can use the magic wand tool, but if you do that, it's important to understand that you'll get a haloed edge. A little trick for using the magic wand tool is you go to select, modify, and then your option will be to expand or contract that marquee. And that's a way you can do it um, in the down and dirty manner. But let's finish blending here. I'm just gonna go to a soft brush now. I'm gonna get back to that layer mask. Go to a soft brush, a very, very soft brush. Bring my opacity down to like 20%. Get a very large brush. Zoom in on this area. And we are just going to carefully blend out that tree. Leave a little bit in. You take a little bit out. Here we go. I'm gonna hit X. It's gonna change my from black to white. See X? I'm gonna paint back the building 
and then I hit X again. I'm going to paint away. This is how I do my blending. A little bit add, a little subtract. And you will see that if you do this over and over again, now I'm going to do it down and dirty, but you could see how you just lose it completely. Now to finish this image, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to add a texture. This is a J Garner texture. I'm going to go to my action set. And I'm going to go to texture overlay. Let's push play. Go through the dialog boxes, grab a texture. Um, I'm going to grab number 48 again. This is an action I used earlier in one of my tutorials. I would have some consistency and use the same one. And this has the effect of warming up the image. Okay. So basically it said you can lower the opacity, which I will do. I'll bring it down significantly. And in this case, I'm not going to paint it off of them because I love the warmth. I'm going to get right on the, the actual the texture itself. So I'm on the texture itself. Now we're going to lasso the area we don't want to see the blur or the uh, texture rather. And I'm going to feather it. Select, modify, and then feather. I'm going to do a broad feather at 250. And then I'm going to blur it away. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And let's get rid of that texture. See, you can see in my dialog here, uh, that texture remains. Here's the original. I'm going to blur it to oblivion. This is what I do if I saw it on faces, etc. I like it on the building. It adds depth and interest. I think it's beautiful. You can also change the color by just getting on top of that and turning turning the opacity or the uh, the saturation level down. Um, let's finish this image by making it truly moody by putting a mark here around it. Select and fe modify feather 250. Now I'm going to select the inverse and come down here to levels and we're going to vignette that image ever so slightly beautiful because I have a layer mask I can paint in that area that went all the way to black which be right around here notice my histogram almost every tone is available beautiful and paint a little here paint a little there and there we have it. Okay, that's my image. So, I'm very happy with this. We'll um, call this a finished image. I'm, we went from the original, which I'll show you now. Very boring, to an extremely beautiful, moody moment. Um, I think the bride will remember this, the day happening this way for her. It was a bit cloudy, a bit ominous, and this makes a much more interesting image. I hope you enjoy this tutorial.